And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower! Hi, I'm Tom Vassell and this is Melody. Hi. Um, we're, you know, the, the sense, the tactile sense that a human has is an impressive thing. And I know it's impressive because my dad used to yell when he stepped on Legos as he walked across the house at night. And now I yell when I step on Legos as I walk across the house at night. But really, there's not too many games that really depend on the sense of, of touch. There's some that depend on um, a sight. and very, You know, most of them just depend on sight. And, and so something that deals with touch is good. And there's been some good games about it. But there's a, an excellent one here that I want to talk about today. And that's Grab Bag by Hobba Games. Uh, grab bag is an interesting game because basically it involves a grab bag. Each player gets one of these bags and in it they put a bunch of shapes. Let's show you those shapes. Alright, we have a yellow cube. We have a black triangular prism. We have a green something, it looks like a piece of bubble gum. A brown moon. An orange pipe. A blue star or purple star. A red star, a slightly smaller, different shape. A purple bow tie. A blue disc. A green sphere. A white, well, Hershey Kiss, I guess. <laughs> and a pink disc. These are all the pieces that are in there. They're very, very different and very easy to tell apart. Uh, you're not going to find much um, difficulty you know, when you feel this, thinking what it is, it's pretty obvious. The only ones that might cause some problems are the two different stars or maybe the two different discs. But they're, the discs have a different thickness and a different size, so they're very easy to tell apart. But this is what goes inside your bag. So the way the game is played is each player has a bag full of these different pieces. And you stick your hand in the bag, which is pretty easy for kids. I have a pretty giant hand, and I can still get mine in very easily. On the table itself is a pile of tokens with these pig shapes on them. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything, really. But the youngest player, in this case is Melody, she pulls any piece she wants from her bag. So go ahead and pull a piece from your bag. Hey. Alright, so she pulls out the pipe. Immediately, every other player starts feeling in her bag, where's that pipe, where's that pipe, where's that pipe, and then, man, I'm, I'm having the hardest time finding it. Um, man, <laughs> I thought this was an easy game. And I'm looking for the pipe, and once I find the pipe, I pull it out of my bag, slam it on the table to show that I have found the pipe. Now, if I pull the wrong piece, I'm out of that round, and the other players can keep going. But basically, uh, like I said, it's really hard to pull out the wrong piece. It's just the first player who does it, puts it on the table, and then they take one of these discs. Then that person, they pull the piece out of their bag, and everyone else looks for that. So that keeps one person from dominating, because it means at least every other turn, they will not be searching for a piece, they're the one picking the piece for people to find. And the kids like the fact that they can pick which piece to find. And that's one variant of the game. When it's over, whoever has the most of these pig tokens is the winner. Another variant of the game takes these pig tiles and turns them over. Each one of these tiles shows one of the pieces. Basically, it's very simple. You turn over a tile and everybody searches for that piece and the first person to find it wins. Now that is a little bit more um, con confrontational, competitive, because in this game, one person can win because they can find all the pieces. I actually prefer the first one where one person finds it. But let's say you're playing with two players like Melody and I are. This would be really the only way for us to play. Um, we both turn over a tile. Let's try it right now. Okay, here's our bags. And uh, I won't look at it ahead of time. So ready? Here we go. And we need to find the bubblegum piece or what have you. All right, so Melody beat me, and so she would take the tile. Although I did find it just barely, she beat me. And you keep doing that, and whoever has the most tiles wins. And those are basically the two different ways to play the game. Now, I've played games before where when you play, feel the tactical different things, it's easy to get them mixed up. Because these are very distinct, I think this is an excellent game for young children especially. Because they can easily find the pieces, and they're not going to cry that much because they pulled out the wrong piece. And because it gives everyone a chance to find it, I played it with Melody and Amy and Holly, uh, three of my daughters, and all three of them were basically on equal footing. When we played, uh, everyone was finding pieces at the same speed. The only person who was kind of laggy behind was Dad, a little bit slower than the rest of us. So this is a good game to play with families. It's fun. It's not something I think adults will find a lot of uh, enjoyment in just because it's, it's too easy. 
but kids will enjoy it. The pieces are very colorful. They're very different, and kids will easily be able to tell the difference between them, and you can teach shapes and three-dimensional, and, you know, there's a lot of good educational value in the game, but it mostly it's fun, and you enjoy the game too, right? Yeah, it was fun. I like the part where you get to pull out the thing, and the um, best part is, like, when you look at the colors, then it's easier. And if you're colorblind, then you can just get out the color. All right, and you can, you, yeah, the, the, sh the colors don't matter that much because the shapes are very distinct. And so I think this will appeal to kids across across many ages. <laughs> uh, my kids like it. We're keeping it. You should check it out. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.